Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We start this morning with the latest on the pandemic here at home and the numbers across the country. Bear County numbers and hospitalizations appear like they are going down. But what about the rest of the United States? We're going to explain. Plus, the issue over the Postal Service and mail-in ballots continues to divide the country. We have the latest on what the House is considering on doing to address the issue. And taking a live look here out at the Alamo City, 79 degrees to start your Sunday. We have a special guest this morning. We'll be joined by Mike Osterhage to give you your full forecast. But until then, good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday, August 16th. Welcome. Yay. Such an exciting day. Sarah Costa officially joining us here on GMSA Weekends. Usually, we would have Sarah Spivey. We're going to get to Mike in a second, but... You actually had a day off yesterday, possibly your last Saturday off in a while. For a while, and I enjoyed it. Well, I, stay, I stayed in. Stayed because in? Because it was brutally hot. It mm -hmm. was, um, I mean, I just, you know, when I did go anywhere, I just in the car, curbside, mm -hmm. blasted the AC. But thank you, Max. See, I love the heat. I like the heat. It's relaxing. No. You sit outside, enjoy some sunshine. You're not from here, though. You grew up in like a that's very true. Cold so climate. I yeah, but so did Mike. We understand that snow is terrible and the cold <laughs> is awful. So I appreciate the 103 temperatures. Well, actually 104. Yes. Oh my yeah. bad. <laughs> two days in a row 104. Two days in a row uh, new record high temperatures. Ooh. And today it's going to be close to it. We're still going to be up there in the uh, low hundreds around the area. But we do have the chance for some rain starting to move into the picture. Late yesterday, there were some showers, a couple of thunderstorms that uh, moved in northwestern portions of the hill country. They all sort of died down. There's a few leftover clouds from that. The clouds may actually keep temperatures from getting even hotter than what they're going to be getting. Like I said, we'll be up into the low hundreds, but not 104 today, probably about 101, 102. Also with this northerly flow, that's what's then going to pull down a few more showers up to the north later on tonight, and that's what's going to give us our chance of rain once we get into the picture tomorrow. Mold and pigweed are both on the low side, and once again, yep, we do have a heat advisory up until 7 o'clock for almost all of our viewing area with the exception along the Rio Grande Valley and well down there to the south. So yeah, if you are outside, just definitely take it easy. 94 at noon, 102 for a high temperature. We'll start to see some of those shores, showers up to the north and to the northeast later on tonight. And then a better, not, not completely rain chance, but a better rain chance around here tomorrow. Take a look ahead at the rest of the week in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, police are searching for a driver of a vehicle who left the scene after hitting an EMS unit on the city's south side. It happened just after 3.30 this morning in the intersection between Southwest Military Drive and Commercial Avenue. Police say the EMS unit and another vehicle struck each other in the middle of that intersection, causing the EMS unit to roll over. Witnesses on the scene said the person in the other vehicle left the scene. Thankfully, the two EMTs in the unit were not injured. Officers tell us the eastbound lanes of Southwest Military were shut down for about an hour. Police are still searching for the suspect. Night of the latest on the pandemic here at home. Local leadership announcing only 170 new COVID-19 cases. Encouraging numbers, but it is important to remember to stay cautious and stay safe. Bear County's cumulative total now up to 43,993 total cases. In addition, we now have 13 more deaths reported, bringing our total death toll here in Bear County to 578. Hospitalizations also going down, a total of only 598 people being treated with the virus. 285 of them are in the ICU, 194 of them are on ventilators, 18% of staffed hospital beds, and 56% of ventilators are now available here in Bear County. Remembering a fallen hero, Marine Lance Corporal Guillermo Willy Perez was killed during a training mission last month off the coast of California. Yesterday, he was brought home. A procession began in San Antonio where Lance Corporal Perez's casket arrived earlier, earlier yesterday morning. He was escorted by New Braunfels police and several other law enforcement agencies. The procession continued in New Braunfels. Hundreds showed up as the fallen hero returned home. And we're here to show that we are not going to forget. New Braunfels Mayor Rusty Brockman has asked residents to fly flags at half staff throughout the weekend to honor their fallen hero. 
President Trump says his younger brother, Robert, has died at age 71. The president said in a statement Saturday night, quote, he was not just my brother, he was my best friend. He will be greatly missed, but we will meet again, end quote. Robert Trump was admitted to a Manhattan hospital with an unsuspected illness. He's had health problems for months. The president visited him Friday and says he died the next day. In your morning headlines, clear-cut changes took clear-cut challenges of this presidential election because of this midst of this pandemic. The big question now is, how's the post office going to handle this huge influx of potential mail-in ballots, and how's it going to look in November? The head of the group that oversees the post office says they won't be able to if the postmaster general keeps putting, quote, roadblocks in front of postal workers, end quote, like removing some postal collection boxes and limiting overtime, and he wants him to step down. But as CNN's Britt Conway reports, President Donald Trump now praising the postmaster. Protesters in D.C. had a message for the postmaster general Saturday, and they delivered it to his home. They're saying Louis DeJoy has got to go, and they're not the only ones. Democratic Representative Jerry Connolly, who chairs the Subcommittee of Government Operations, which oversees the post office, is calling for the Postmaster General's immediate resignation. He immediately moved to measures that he called operational efficiencies, but were basically one big fat Trojan horse designed to delay the delivery of mail. The measures Connolly is talking about are being reviewed by the Postal Service Inspector General right now. But President Trump has his appointees back. He's trying to streamline the post office and make it great again. What the president doesn't believe will be so streamlined. Universal mail-in voting is going to be catastrophic. For it to work, he believes it all comes down to money, which is on hold during stimulus negotiations. The problem is the Democrats are not approving the funds necessary. But all 50 states have some form of absentee or mail-in voting already in place. And Representative Connolly says the influx of mail the post office will see come November is similar to the holidays. He thinks what's happening is something entirely different. It is a willful, deliberate, cynical attempt to sabotage an election. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And House Democrats considering a return to Washington next week to address these issues related to the U.S. Postal Service. Four sources telling CNN about the possible discussions. Legislation could forbid numerous things like sorting device changes, preventing facilities from closing down, protecting overtime pay, and maintaining those important delivery schedules. Here's the thing, though. Even if the House does pass such measures, it'll likely stall out in the Senate. And time now, 6.07, 79 degrees out. Well, we are in tick season, and experts warn this year is going to be an especially bad one. Ooh. Yuck. Still ahead on GMSA, we have some tips on how to keep you safe from getting bitten by one. All right, Sarah, we know you're a big Harry Potter fan. Are you a big Star Wars fan? I'm not. I love Star Wars, but mm -hmm. I'm not one of the people that knows all the, you know. The intricacies of Star Wars? Yes. What about Lego Star Wars? I'll, I'm into it. Okay, do well, it. <laughs> you're going to be real into it. We have so much to talk about. A new Star Wars special. We're going to explain next. If you're enjoying your Sunday morning in bed with the AC blasting and <laughs> cool 69 with lots of comforters on you, enjoy yourself because it's only going to get hotter. Mike is in for Sarah Spivey and he'll let you know about your Sunday forecast when you come back. In your morning consumer headlines, we regret to inform you that your college acceptance letter was an error. Oh, oh my goodness. gosh, can you imagine getting that letter? The dean of admissions at Syracuse University had to send out correction emails after the school sent dozens of acceptance messages to unintended recipients. The emails even contained visa transfer instructions oh, for international students. In the past few years, Carnegie Mellon and University of South Florida St. Petersburg have made the same mistake. Imagine being an international student coming all the way here and Ugh. then getting that return letter. What a mess. Ugh. Sorry, guys. All right, some more optimistic news, though. Listen up, Star Wars fans. Mike, I know you should listen here. New LEGO Star Wars Holiday Special. Don't get too excited, guys. Set to premiere on Disney+, Plus, according to StarWars.com, set to take place right after the events of the last film, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. I still need to see that one. In the special, Lego Rey leaves her friends to prepare for Life Day. Life Day is a holiday that was first introduced in 1978's Star Wars Holiday Special. Iconic heroes and villains of the saga will show up, including Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, and 
the ever-loved Yoda. The LEGO Star Wars special will debut on November 17th. All right, so we talked to Sarah, and I make fun, but Mike, are you a big Star Wars guy? Yeah. Yeah? So I Star Wars. But well, to gauge it, like one to 10, how big? Like, are you are you dressing up as Yoda no. <laughs> for the premiere? I no. highly doubt that. No, also, doubt nice that. suit. Oh, thank you very much. It's my summer. Summer. You know, as Sarah and I were talking about, I can't wear it out in the next couple of weeks after no. Earth. After, weeks Labor, after Labor Day. I, so. Labor Day, no more seer sucker, so right. wear, wear it up. Can't do it. So, anyway, yeah, it, the, as far as the, the Christmas holiday special, if mm -hmm. it's on Hallmark, fine, but, you know. That's right. Surely Hallmark guy. Hallmark Got it. Channel. Right. So, um, you, you know, we ran this story about that the other day, and I never realized... There, there was a Star Wars Christmas show back from what? Well, Mark was saying it was completely awful. It was and, a huge yeah, everybody problem. said it was. Just, and the, the little clip we showed, oh god, it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, we still love Star Wars here, for the record. Yeah. Nice the first picture. One. Or Looks actually, like a, episode four. Mm. Yeah. Looks like a uh, wait, episode beautiful one. Beautiful Van Gogh painting. Though. Pardon me. You mean episode one? No, episode four. <laughs> the first movie, though. You're not a Jar Jar Binks guy? A, a new I, That was a dead. Uh, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> hi, let's get back to the weather. Uh, it was a beautiful sunset yesterday. We had a couple of clouds hanging around, but boy, it was a toasty one. Got up to 104 again yesterday. Same thing as we did on Friday. Both record high temperatures. The record today is 103, going for 102 for a high temperature. Today, it's obviously going to be just a, a scorcher again. We're at 79 here in town. We're below 80, so Max is happy in the morning except up around Canyon Lake and the humidity dew points are back up there mid 70s plenty of humidity around here although it is dropping down we had dew points the past couple of days in the afternoon drop down into the 50s and so that's why if you were in the shade it was a little bit more tolerable and Right now we have a heat index uh, in the low 80s here in town, 80 in New Braunfels, 76 in Gonzales. So we will see the, the humidity drop down somewhat later on today, but that just means it's going to feel about as hot as what the air temperature is. So we will be well up into the uh, hundreds again today as far as what it feels like. So yesterday, of course, we had those, uh, as I showed you off the top of the show, those couple of showers and thunderstorms out there in uh, portions of the hill country. And there's some leftover energy from that not anything going on today at noon, but even by late afternoon, this computer model is trying to scare up a couple little things up in northern portions of the hill country, and then especially up around Austin. And notice how also some of the clouds kind of drift down in here. So if they come in a little bit sooner, may block out enough sun to keep us even at say 100 instead of 102. Also, we have a few showers and even a couple of thunderstorms that are gonna be developing this evening, primarily up to the north. Uh, Austin may be lingering down in toward San Marcos and perhaps kind of edging its way down into say New Braunfels area. But then once we get into tomorrow, this whole northerly flow is going to continue to push some of the energy down in here. And you can make this out a little bit better on the uh, national picture. And there's the big clockwise rotation, the high, which has been keeping us so hot the past couple of days, or about the past week or so. By the way, it's been nine days, 100s in a row. But that's what's going to pull some of this energy down here. So we do still have a decent rain chance around here tomorrow and maybe a lingering shower if we're lucky on into Tuesday. So 94 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and plenty of sunshine today. We still make it up to 102, mostly sunny, and then we'll start to see some of those clouds kind of uh, edge down from north to south, a couple of showers around up to the north. And despite that, though, we still have a heat advisory up until 7 o'clock. Now, tomorrow, we will see a couple of those showers, a few of those uh, thunderstorms around the area, 40% chance for some rain. So best chance of rain we had. Maybe a shower on Tuesday. Still back to the upper 90s and even some triple digits, though, mid to latter part of the week. Our percentage went up on Monday, though. Yeah. It was at 20 it or was 30. About, yeah, late last week we were going for about 30, maybe 40%. So I'm, going for, I'm trying to be optimistic. Okay, I was going to so. say, how optimistic is this? It's looking encouraging. Okay. Now, it's not going to be everybody getting rain, um, but it's the best rain chance we've had around here. Well, we know time, the airport so. definitely won't get rain. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. My backyard. <laughs> time now, 617, 79 degrees out. Well, are you a roller coaster fan? Today is your day. It's National <laughs> Roller Coaster Day. <laughs> Woo! We have some fun facts about this day still ahead on GMSA.
And Lyme's disease, Bell's palsy, bourbon virus, all can be traced back to this. Ew, a tiny tick. Gross. Yeah. Coming up next on GMSA, we have some easy tips to protect yourself from that. The itch, it felt like fire ants from head to toe. A tick bite sent Darrow to the emergency room. The tick bite caused Darrow to have a unique allergic reaction to meat. They had no idea two hours after eating a hamburger that in another two hours they'd be covered in hives. Ticks can also bring on other diseases such as Bell's palsy and the potentially deadly bacterial disease anaplasmosis. The CDC reporting there has been a spike in cases of anaplasmosis. There were more than 6,000 cases in 2018 compared to only 348 in the year 2000. So what can you do to protect yourself? First, avoid areas with high grass and walk in the center of trails when hiking. Wearing light colored clothing and tucking pants in your socks can make it easier to spot ticks before they slip underneath your clothes. When you come back indoors, put dry clothes into a dryer on high heat for 10 minutes. That kills the ticks. And I know, especially during this time of social distancing and trying to be outside, a lot more people are trying to be adventurous, going hiking, but it's meant you've got to make sure to be safe. Stick to the trail. Stick to the trail. Especially here in South Texas. That's true. And your yard can also protect you against ticks. Make sure to trim the shrubs, trim the hanging tree branches, and rake your leaves. You also want to check your plants that you have in your yard. And studies have also found a high number of ticks in invasive plants like Japanese barberry and bush honeysuckle. All right, time now, 622, 79 degrees out. It's the perfect time for thrill seekers to celebrate. <laughs> Woo! Today is National Roller Coaster Day. We have some fun facts next on GMSA. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. There is always a reason to celebrate today. It's just better than some. It is the perfect time for thrill seekers to enjoy the excitement that amusement parks have to offer. Of course, while social distancing, we are talking about roller coasters and our Sarah Costa here was actually live from a roller coaster. Worst decision ever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever do it. Well, August 16th, what's well, today, marks National Roller Coaster Day. It's the unofficial holiday that commemorates the first vertical loop roller oh. coaster, which was patented on this day in 1898. Other fun facts, the oldest roller coasters are believed to have originated from the so-called Russian mountains hmm. of the 17th century that were made of ice hills and wood that sounds safe yeah no you know a lot of people are already skeptical of roller coasters imagine roller coasters from 1898 <laughs> <laughs> for years coney island was believed to be the birthplace of the first roller coaster in the united states in 1884 but it turns out inventor jg taylor good old jg may have opened his first roller coaster at rocky point rhode island all the way back in 1872. So guys, how do you feel about an 1872 roller coaster going that vertical drop? I wanna know how, they couldn't have been going that fast back then. Cause I mean, now you get on a roller coaster. When I did Wonder Woman for that live shot. What was your reaction? I never actually got to see the video. Oh. Can you reenact the facial expression? It, it, it's like <laughs> all layers of my skin are back and I'm crying, like ugly crying. Well, thank you for doing it. Cause I really opted I, out of it. They asked me again, I said no. no crazy. <laughs> Time now, 627, 79 degrees out. Well, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has granted emergency authorization for a new COVID-19 test. It requires your saliva. Those details still ahead on our next half hour. Parents and school administrators facing tough decisions over whether to send their loved ones back to the classroom. Next on GMSA, the latest on the pandemic around the country and that back to school coverage. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Thank you for starting your day with us. It is 6.30 this morning, August 16th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we we're talking about roller coasters. I don't know, mm -hmm. I have like a pit in my stomach now. <laughs> talking about the, I just like- Our Sarah stop. Costa got famous because of her Wonder Woman. I. <sighs> yeah, it was great. You did it, I didn't have to. She yeah. was live at, was it Six Flags? It was Six Flags. Six Flags. They did a great production. They, I mean, they're, you're sh live and they have all these cameras on you and they climbed, you know, the hills up there and had like mm -hmm. all these different shots. Um, but yeah, never again. Never again? Yeah. That's okay. That makes sense. Well, maybe not today either because it's going to be, it's only 79 now, so we're happy. We're content, right, Mike? That line of demarcation for being happy is 80 degrees. We're going to cross that today. 
He's happy when it's below 80, but it still <laughs> feels like it's just a slightly above that uh, because we've got dew point temperatures that are still, of course, very high in the morning. And everybody, uh, 85 though, still at Del Rio, but everybody else is down into the 70s as of right now. That dew point's at 74. That means you walk outside and you can feel a whole bunch of humidity. So if you're going to early church services, get ready because your glasses may fog up this morning. And as far as the aquifer, it did go up a little bit, maybe just a little pressure fluctuation this weekend. But still, the 10-day average is sitting there below 660. And as far as the allergens are concerned, mold and pigweed are both on the low side. All right, if you look at the water vapor imagery, and we've been talking about this for the past couple of days, how we're going to be getting into a northerly flow. And those aren't necessarily clouds, just some moisture aloft in the atmosphere. But if we do get some high, thin clouds out there that may keep temperatures down a little bit, past couple of days have been 104, going for 102 today. But again, a little bit more of kind of a veil of clouds, and that could actually knock us down maybe another notch or two. But with this northerly flow and out to the uh, west, did have some of those showers and thunderstorms that developed late yesterday, and there's some leftover energy from that and more bits of energy that are going to be coming down through here. And that's going to be not only late tonight, but also tomorrow. However, we still have a heat advisory up until 7 o'clock today. Heat index readings are going to be well up there in the triple digit range. Mold and uh, pigweed again are on the low side. 102 for a high temperature. Yes, we will be just below 100 the next couple of days, but I don't think we're done with those yet. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thank you, Mike. Now to the latest into our newsroom. An 11 year old in critical condition in the hospital this morning after a shooting on the northeast side. All of this happening just after 6 p.m. This is the 5000 block of Walsham Road. That's near the Long John Silvers in the area. People in two separate vehicles were shot. One vehicle had one adult and seven children inside. One of them, that 11 year old, the child shot and taken to Bamsey in the second vehicle, a 35 year old woman also shot. She was taken to the hospital at last check stable condition. Right now, police are still working trying to figure out what exactly led up to the shooting and who was responsible. Well, five people are in the hospital. Two are critically injured after being ejected from a vehicle during a rollover crash. It happened on Loop 1604 near I-35 last night. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, a tire on that pickup truck blew out, causing the crash. Two of the five people inside were hospitalized and the other three suffered minor injuries. Deputies say they had to shut down the northbound lanes of Loop 1604, but the roadway was later reopened a couple hours later. Now to the latest on this pandemic from around the country. The number of cases appears to be going down, but the death toll still remains high more than 169,000 college people. students. Excuse me, Max <laughs> college students returning to campus and parents and school administrators face tough decisions over whether to send their loved ones back. ABC's Christine Sloan has more. Next President Trump months, optimistic, say saying coronavirus cases are on the decline. Nearly 85 percent of jurisdictions all across our country are reporting a very steep decline in cases. And that's despite the fact that we have the number one testing program anywhere in the world. We're up to almost 70 million tests, far beyond any other country. This, as the CDC says, more than 200,000 American lives could be lost by Labor Day. You can't run away from the numbers of people who've died, the number of people who are getting hospitalized, the surges we're seeing. And many students return to the classroom. More than a dozen students potentially exposed at this Oklahoma high school after one of their classmates tested positive, but misunderstood quarantine rules and went to school anyway. At Villanova University, police breaking up a large part Party. The school's president telling students they'll be sent home if they don't follow campus health guidelines, while a spokesperson for the U.S. Naval Academy confirming a number of midshipmen tested positive and the University of Arizona testing students before they move in. Those who are positive will be sent to an isolation dorm for 10 days. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, 350 military children in San Antonio now have a brand new backpack to start the new school year off. The giveaway was part of the Operation Homefront Back to School Brigade. The giveaway happened yesterday morning at the AT&T Center parking lot. The backpacks were filled with necessary school supplies. Operation Homefront has, given, has been giving away backpacks since 2008. More students in the San Antonio area headed back to school this upcoming week. Alamo Heights ISD, Northeast ISD, San Antonio ISD, and Southside ISD 
all starting their academic year tomorrow. Lavernia ISD set to start classes on Wednesday. For a full list of the back to school schedule, we have all that information and so much more. Just head to KSAT.com. And extracurriculars, a big concern for so many families, so many parents, so many students as schools start their academic year. And still a lot of confusion as to what parents and students and schools are going to be doing about fall sports. Sarah, you've been on top of the back to school situation. What's the latest? Well, college football is one of the sports that has been a big topic this week as schools decide whether or not it's safe to play this fall. But it's not just making school making the decision. Athletes and their families also have to make that decision. Here are some tips to help you navigate that tough decision. We're moving in, into a very troubled waters right now. It's a very narrow path to get fall sports right. That's the latest message from collegiate sports top doctor when it comes to the pandemic. So what does this mean for parents and athletes? According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, there are still ways to play safely. First, if you're sick, stay home. Wash your hands frequently before, during, and after practices and games. Stay six feet apart. Wear a mask if possible. Bring your own equipment. The CDC has also put out recommendations for the lowest to highest risk activities for student athletes. The risk is lower when kids build skills at home or practice with some teammates. But it increases when young athletes compete with other teams in their area or travel to large competitions. Emergency room doctor Leanna Wen says people need to ask themselves the same questions about student athletes as they do when weighing whether or not to send kids back to school. Is the area that you live in, does it have relatively low levels of community spread? Test positivity less than 5%, cases going consistently down. Do you have someone in your family who is immunocompromised? And as always, we want to keep you informed as much as possible when it comes to heading back to school. Right now on KSAT.com slash school, you can find all you need to know about the start of the academic year, what health measures schools are implementing for in-person instruction, as well as other important information for parents. And as we've been saying throughout the morning, some of the biggest school districts in and around San Antonio starting classes back up this week and in the coming weeks. One of them, San Antonio ISD. But with this new school year during this pandemic, a lot of questions. That is why today on Leading SA at 8 a.m. right here on GMSA, SAISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez joins us live. We want your input and your questions as well. So head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com and submit your questions. We now have an entire send us your questions section. Yeah, time now, 639, 79 degrees out. A shelter, an animal shelter with a famous name gets adopted by his namesake. Hmm. The story of, oh, Dennis Quaid, the cat. <laughs> Still ahead on GMSA. <laughs> that took a turn. And the FDA granting emergency authorization for the saliva direct test. We're going to explain what that means and the details and how this test works next. First, let's take a look outside with live cam. Still no sun. Still no sun. It's out. <laughs> It should be up by now. All right. It's just sleeping in this Sunday. We would all be doing the same too. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and just keep it here. Mike will let us know about your Sunday forecast. Well, if getting a nasal swab to test for COVID-19 makes you cringe, ooh, here's some good news. A new test could use your saliva instead. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration granted emergency authorization for the saliva, saliva direct test on Saturday. It appears to be fairly accurate, cheap, fast, and it relies on commonly available regions. Researchers from the Yale School of Public Health developed it, and the NBA funded the test development, and the teams have been giving, giving it to asymptomatic players. And as our fashionable Mike Osage is about to tell us, today's temperatures are expected to rise to 100 degrees and more. And we just want to give a quick reminder that there are going to be some cooling stations set up for you to cool down. Nine cooling centers across San Antonio open today from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. For the complete list of locations, head to our website, ksat.com. You are required to wear a face covering, be screened before entering. And of course, during this pandemic, it is so vital that you remember to social distance. And Sarah, you were telling me we we're going over kind of how we keep our, our homes during this summer heat. What's like the average temperature you got? I, I know people may not believe me, but during the day, I keep mm -hmm. it at 78. That's no, that's good. Honestly, it's eco friendly. I, I'm, I'm very cold natured. I'm the kind mm. of girl that's always in a sweatshirt and thick <coughs> socks and stuff. But when I step out, I have to step outside sometimes just to defrost. <laughs> Really? But, but when and then I immediately start <laughs> melting. Defrost from 78 degrees. I get it. 
but also, you know, it's hot when your air conditioning in your house can't keep up. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's at 78, so. but it's constantly going, which yeah. is insane to me. Right, and so whatever the temperature's set at, but the actual temperature inside is even higher than that. You See, know, you guys have full houses, though. 500 square foot apartment, I'm good to go. <laughs> I got my little ice box going, and it's, you know, I'm good. Good for you, Max. <laughs> yes, what are the perks? Right. What are the perks? That's it. On, on the serious side, though, it is right. another one of those days where you do definitely have to uh, to take it easy. Right, stay you safe. Are going outside at all. Lots of water and all. As the experts always say, don't wait until you're thirsty. You got to hydrate just constantly just to keep that moisture up in your body. So, all right, that's a really cool looking picture. I love that, how they timed it just right. It's a great one. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. Keep the pictures coming on in, folks. And no, no real sign. I mean, it looks like it's trying to lighten up, but it's going to be about another uh, 15, 18 minutes until the sun officially pops over the horizon. We will have a few uh, low clouds out there. Didn't see much uh, coming into work this morning, but we will have a couple of them out there. Um, yeah, it has been hot nine days in a row. We'll call it 10 today of triple digit temperatures. 24 so far up through yesterday of 100 degree days this year and the average high temperature for the month. Now that we're halfway through it, 100.4 degrees. The coolest high temperature we ha have had so far in August has been 98 degrees. Yep, it's hot and it's going to stay hot throughout the, the rest of the week. Yesterday, 104, just like on Friday, another record high temperature. A lot of extreme uh, triple digit readings all around the area. And that's going to be the same thing again today. Going to be up in the triple digits. Now, cloud cover is definitely going to be a factor today. How soon some of the clouds uh, start to work their way on in here. We've got this northerly flow and computer models do have a couple of uh, showers trying to develop later on this afternoon. There was uh, I, they're just going to be few and far between. I guess the best way to put it. And again, most of them up to the, the north. Don't get your hopes really, really high, but the the hope is that some of these clouds try and work their way in here some of these high clouds a little bit sooner than later to help keep temperatures maybe even down a degree or two we're not gonna be up to 104 today but it's still like i said going to be hot maybe if the clouds come in a little sooner we don't hit 100 that would be nice uh, later on this evening most of the energy is going to be north and east up around austin maybe san marcus and then we continue to keep this northerly flow in the atmosphere throughout the day tomorrow now this computer model has the majority of everything off to the west but we will still have about a 40 percent chance for some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms around the area throughout the day tomorrow maybe a couple of leftovers on uh, tuesday and then after that, it's still going to be hot. It's still going to be hot tomorrow anyway, despite the fact we do have that rain chance. 94 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And right now, going for 102. Again, if we get a few more clouds coming in here a little bit sooner, could actually keep us from getting quite that hot. We do have a heat advisory, though, again today. The heat index reading is going to be way up there for most all of the area, except uh, this is kind of the fringes off to the west and down to the south. 99 tomorrow, a few showers and thunderstorms around here. 99 on Tuesday. I think we rack up a few more triple digit readings Wednesday, Thursday, and still it's going to be hot into Friday and Saturday. Today, though, again, is the transition day. This is the last mm. of the normal high temperature being 97. I'm excited for Nor that cloud coverage to come. <laughs> well, don't, again, it, it's going to be real kind of iffy. It'd be cloudier up to the north. He's but. bursting your clouds. Normal high temperature <laughs> tomorrow's 96. <laughs> oh, whoa. That's the normal. Big cool down. The average. <laughs> nice and cool. <laughs> no, on paper. Thanks, Mike. Not necessarily reality. <laughs> Time now, 648, 79 degrees out. Well, a shelter animal with a famous name gets adopted by his namesake, and a pair of bison comes, blows, through at Yellowstone Park coming up next. That's today's look at this. This feline fairy tale of Dennis Quaid ends with the furry tale of feline Dennis Quaid. You look confused. Okay, you see, Dennis Quaid, the actor, not the cat, has agreed to adopt Dennis Quaid, the cat, not the actor. That made it worse. Let me try again. Hollywood actor Dennis Quaid has decided to adopt a shelter cat named Dennis Quaid. The actor reached out to the Lynchburg Humane Society after the same named shelter cat made local news in Virginia. I just couldn't resist. Had to. The folks at the shelter couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, there's no way this is real. 
After convincing them, the actor who produces a pet show podcast agreed to adopt the cat. It even gave him an idea on how to rope in other celebs. Maybe I should start uh, naming uh, animals and shelters after different celebrities and see who bites. I'll tell you what bites having a parasite eat your tongue. While doing scans of fish skulls, Rice University researchers discovered a parasitic crustacean had fed on one of the subject's tongues and effectively taken its place permanently. Ugh. No real news here, it's just kind of cool and gross. Finally, chew on this. Officials posted crazy video showing a pair of beastly bison coming to blows in Yellowstone National Park. One animal wallops the other with such power it literally lifts it off the ground. Officials say it's mating season and the park's male bison are particularly aggressive right now. Yeah, that's no bull. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. And time now, 6.53, 79 degrees out. Let's take a look at what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, the breaking news overnight, the president's brother, Robert Trump, has died. The White House confirmed in a statement uh, what President Trump is saying about his relationship with his younger sibling this morning. Plus, the battle over mail-in voting, the president's latest attacks against voting by mail as states across the country prepare for record numbers of mail-in ballots. And the Postal Service warns that millions of votes might not make it in time. And finally, schools struggling to control coronavirus outbreaks, canceled classes, mandatory testing, and teachers pleading for online learning. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. In the news you need to know before you go, police are searching for a driver of a vehicle who left the scene after hitting an EMS unit on the city's south side. It happened just after 3.30 this morning in the intersection between Southwest Military Drive and Commercial Avenue. Police say the EMS unit and another vehicle struck each other in the middle of that intersection, causing the EMS unit to roll over. Witnesses on the scene said the person in the other vehicle ran away. Thankfully, the two EMTs in the unit were not injured. Officers tell us the eastbound lanes of Southwest Military were shut down for about an hour. Police are still searching for that suspect. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> it's National Joke Day! So here's the thing. Research actually shows laughter can be a really great natural form of medicine. It activates the ab muscles and it releases feel-good endorphins. So Sarah, take it away. You got any good jokes? Um, okay. Where did Captain Hook get his hook? Where? The second-hand store! Oh my <laughs> goodness. All right, I got one. Have you guys heard of the claustrophobic astronaut? No. He no. just needed some space. But I'm bumping. But I'm yeah, <laughs> and, the, and the one, and right now, you know, just like in Star Wars when they're, you know, they felt the, something in the force, my boys right now are going to go, oh, because <laughs> the horse walks into the bar, bartender says, why the long face? Oh, yes. Yes. How about the <laughs> tomato <laughs> family's walking along, the little one's lagging behind, and dad says, catch up. <laughs> I like that one. They're great dad jokes, though. This is good. We did a whole segment on dad jokes a few months ago. I remember it. You got me Mike to laugh. Mike has been practicing that's right. dad yes, jokes yes, for yes, many years funny. now. Yeah, so. What, why should you never trust stairs? Because they're always up to something. On that note, how's the weather looking? <laughs> <laughs> See, they're groaners, but they're they're funny, you know. And no. and like you said, it makes you feel good when you laugh a little bit. You can just laugh at the weather, you know, in these hot temperatures. Hopefully, so <laughs> we're in the 70s right now. A heat advisory is uh, in a, goes into effect again up until seven o'clock. This evening, we're going to have temperatures well up into the low hundreds. A couple of showers going to be developing up in our northern hill, our northern uh, counties up in the hill country and off to the northeast later on late this evening, um, about dinner time, maybe into the evening hours, and we'll have a few extra clouds around here. About a 40% chance for a shower thunderstorm around tomorrow, maybe a leftover on Tuesday. It's still going to be hot, even though normal high temperatures start to go down tomorrow. Today, the normal high, meaning the 30-year average is 97, tomorrow's 96. We joke about the weather a lot, but how important is it that we actually get this rain in this coming week? Very. It's crucial. I mean, you look at your, your backyard around Scorched here. Scorched We really haven't earth. had anything. You know, last time we had some decent rain, and it was very spotty, was on uh, August 3rd. We had those afternoon storms in this northerly airflow, so it's a similar overall pattern. And you just gotta, you know, some people are gonna need some rain. It's not gonna be a widespread thing, but at least there'll be some out there. So, all right, Mike, thank Come you so much. Rain. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m.
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police searching for a driver this morning after they say that they caused an overnight rollover crash just ahead. How officers say the suspect crashed into an EMS vehicle. And some of our largest local school districts are set to start up their academic school year tomorrow. Today's leading essay, SAISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez joins us live. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. The sun is up. It is 80 degrees. We're going to check in with Mike Oserhage. Check out what the rest of the weekend and what your week is going to look like. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 16th. Thank you so much for joining us this beautiful Sunday morning. When you look out at City at Live Cam, it looks, yes. it looks so peaceful. It's so nice out there. A pristine Sunday morning. We have Sarah Costa. First official day Yay. on the desk. Woo. So happy to be here. Excited to have you. And we are excited to have Mike Oserhage and his seersucker suit this morning. <laughs> Uh, so thank dapper. You. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's it looks nice out there. It does look kind of peaceful, but it is definitely uh, already on the warm side. Obviously, we only cool down on the hourly readings to 79 degrees. It's going to be another hot one today. Here's a look at uh, what's going to be going on today. Obviously, we've got uh, some clouds out there. Uh, maybe even call it partly cloudy, uh, warm, humid. 94 at noon, and then 102. We do have another heat advisory in effect today. A few more clouds are going to try and slide on in here. We've got some high clouds that are going to be building in from the north and it may actually keep us down from 102, depending on how quickly they come on in here. But there will be some more clouds up uh, to the north and then there's also going to be a few showers developing up to the north later on. Um, maybe about dinner time or into the evening hours. Now, as I mentioned, there is the heat advisory in effect up until seven o'clock tonight for almost all of our area, with the exception along the Rio Grande Valley and well down to the south. Those heat index readings are going to be way, way up there. Mold and pigweed are both on the low side. And again, 102 for high temperature, a couple of showers up to the north. But we still keep that same pattern. And so that's what's going to be throwing some disturbances down in here and giving us a a decent chance at some rain around here tomorrow. How hot's it going to be this week? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, police are searching for a driver of a vehicle who left the scene after hitting an EMS unit on the city's south side. It happened just after 3.30 this morning in the intersection between Southwest Military Drive and Commercial Avenue. Police say the EMS unit and another vehicle struck each other in the middle of that intersection, causing the EMS unit to roll over. Witnesses on scene told police the person in the other vehicle left the scene. Thankfully, the two EMTs in that unit were not injured. Officers tell us the eastbound lanes of Southwest Military were shut down for about an hour. Police are still searching for that suspect. Now to the latest on the pandemic here at home here in Bear County. We have the newest numbers, 170 new COVID-19 cases reported in just the last 24 hours. Now it does look like these numbers are decreasing, but it is important to stay cautious, stay safe and stay vigilant. That brings our total though here at home, 43,993 cases since this pandemic hit. Now there are also 13 more deaths reported, bringing our total death toll to 578. Some good news. Hospitalizations continue to go down right now. 598 patients in local hospitals, 285 of them are in the ICU, 194 of them are on ventilators. Well, across the Lone Star State, the death toll now stands at 9,840 cases. Health officials reported that number yesterday that 6,481 people were hospitalized. The number of hospitalizations has been decreasing since peaking in July at 10,893 people and the number of newly reported cases is shrinking, but the virus is still spreading geographically and the number of coronavirus tests being done daily in Texas dropped by the thousands in August, mirroring nationwide trends. And as Sarah was saying, the number of people getting tested for COVID-19 is decreasing as schools are reopening and students are preparing for fall sports. The number of tests being done each day here in Texas dropping by the thousands. Again, just mirroring our nationwide trends. The drop comes even as deaths continue to climb and as students are returning to class and football teams charge ahead with their plans to play. Now, the trend worrying a lot of health officials who fear that states are blindly flying into fall unless enough tests are done to keep this virus in check. And the summertime coronavirus caseload may have peaked in the United States, but it is nowhere near over. In just the last seven days, five states reporting record numbers of deaths. 
All this as schools and colleges across the country struggle with the reopening plans. ABC's Trevor Alt is in New York with more. Across the country this morning, some schools are fighting desperately to plan around the pandemic and others are reacting as the virus hits home. At Oklahoma State University, Sorority Pi Beta Phi's off-campus chapter house is now under quarantine with 23 people there testing positive for COVID-19. This is a tough time and there is no denying that. An Oklahoma school district says 25 students are in quarantine because two students at separate high schools went to class after testing positive. Teachers there now begging the district to move to virtual learning. My choice right now is risking orphaning my three children I currently have, risking my unborn child, risking my husband's life to teach other people's children. In Arizona, one district outside Phoenix has already canceled its first day of school after more than 100 teachers and staff refused to come in. At Ohio State University, messages telling 500 students they had a three-hour window to get tested led to these testing sites flooded with people with no social distancing in some areas. The university says students were aware of batch testing plans, and that lack of social distancing happened when everyone ran inside because of a thunderstorm. A new COVID-19 test from Yale is hoping to help with these kinds of problems. Their saliva swab test just received emergency FDA authorization. It's designed to be cheaper and faster, though saliva-based tests are still not proven to be as accurate as a nasal swab. At the University of Oklahoma, nine football players have tested positive after returning from a week off. The Sooners are still planning on playing this season, though many teams are not. We enter into the sports season without any planning. Like, I think a lot of people hope that the pandemic would be over by now. And it's not. And in the face of this historic uncertainty, students like Nebraska Omaha freshman Shayla Fox are trying to opt for optimism. I'm a little concerned that, you know, the semester is going to end early again, but I'm excited that maybe next semester, uh, at worst next year, it'll be normal again. And that was Trevor Alt reporting. Back here at home, some of our largest districts in and around San Antonio start their academic year this coming week, some even tomorrow. But in the midst of this pandemic, a lot of questions are looming. Absolutely. In today's leading SA segment, SAISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez joins us live. Good morning, Superintendent. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. We're just going to jump right into it. We obviously know virtual learning is going to be a huge factor this year, at least to start. How have you guys helped bridge this digital divide in our community? We're very proud, Max, that we've distributed over 42,000 devices. And I ask our families, all of our school buildings will be open, even though we're starting virtually for the first three weeks. And so anybody who needs a device, who needs a hotspot, please just call your school, come pick it up. Uh, we'll have staff ready to support you. And Superintendent, when in class school starts back up, what precautions are in place? So first of all, we're going to follow Metro Health data. Uh, we have a multi-level system similar to Metro Health. Right now we're in the red, so we're starting virtually. If health conditions improve, uh, we would go to the yellow and it would be sometime after Labor Day. We would phase in children very slowly up to 25%. That means four to six children per classroom. We will require masks. We have uh, cleansing procedures, disinfecting procedures, as well as children washing their hands every hour. And these are, these are procedures that parents would have to agree to before children can come in, but only again if health conditions improve. Now we understand the red, yellow, green sections and kind of those procedures in place, but do you guys have any sort of timeline as to when students and staff can head back to the classroom? So Max, you know, we do have 40% of our teachers that are on a voluntary basis uh, teaching from their classrooms tomorrow because they're gonna be our safety committee to ensure that all of our safety procedures, that all of our safety equipment is adequate. Uh, we don't have any specific timeline. Uh, right now, what Metro Health has told us is that they expect health conditions to improve and that after Labor Day sometime, we could allow children to come in person. Uh, we will have other services at our buildings, for example, distributing devices, uh, special needs testing, but right now, we, we don't want to put any timeline unless health conditions improve. And all of our parents will have the option to stay virtual as long as they want, even all year long. Well, Superintendent, how are you guys pivoting with extracurricular activities like sports, band, and clubs? So in the, in the red and yellow zones, we've said that there will be no extracurriculars. We may allow some uh, uh, practice uh, and, and health uh, 
and some conditioning uh, because that is very important for any future uh, activities for our athletes. But right now in, in the red and yellow, we're not actually allowing any activities. Now in the green zone, which again, this would be when health conditions allow that, we, we would start allowing some uh, extracurricular sports, mainly the, the sports that, that are, don't have any contact. And then again, we'll just continue to watch for guidance from the state. Now, Superintendent, there's obviously a lot of questions looming across the country here in our community. A lot of families watching right now, a lot of parents. What is your message to them? What should they expect this coming week and in the coming weeks and beginning of the semester? So first, I think, first of all, for all of our parents, uh, uh, know that the first couple of weeks, you know, don't panic if your child's struggling or if your child is, is having uh, trouble logging on. Our staff are going to be there to support you. It always takes us a week or two just to get things in order. So please don't panic. Uh, we will be there and our buildings will be open for any needs you have, whether it's devices for you to register in children. I think what I would ask our families is be patient. Uh, we will give you updates on a regular basis as, as health conditions improve. It will be all driven by Metro Health. You'll be able to stay virtual as long as you want. And then when we bring children in person, it's going to be in very small numbers. It's going to be phased in. Uh, you're going to be able to see the safety procedures. You're going to be able to actually do virtual tours of our buildings. So I ask our families, let's let's just work together to do this very safely. I know that in-person instruction is the best way for us to teach our children, but we got to do it in a safe way. And I want our families to do feel good about it. I want our staff to feel good. Right now, there's a lot of anxiety, Max. And, and I think overall, we need to work together, uh, practice these safety procedures that we all know, uh, wearing masks, social distancing. And then let's, again, when it's safe, we'll bring in children slowly, but only when parents and our staff and everybody feels good about it. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning, Superintendent. We wish you guys and all the school districts in our area the best of luck as they return to school this week. Thank you for having me. Stay safe. You too. Time now, 8-11, 80 degrees out. A popular singer and songwriter is defending herself against Twitter trolls. What Kelly Clarkson had to say to one user after she was blamed for her recent divorce. Plus, over a thousand Trump supporters expected to gather this weekend in the Florida Gulf. Up next, details on the Guinness World Record they're trying to break. Take a look outside with live cam already at 80 degrees at just a little after 8 o'clock this morning, it's going to get hot. So Mike is going to be in, and he's going to let you know about your Sunday forecast. Just make sure you stay safe and cool. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. 816 this morning, already 80 degrees. That's supporters of President Donald Trump trying to break a record for, get this, the largest boat parade in the beach of Florida, and they tried to do it just yesterday. More than 1,181 Trump supporters were expected to break the Guinness World Record for the largest boat parade. Oh, wow. The previous record was 1,180 in Malaysia on September 13th, back in 2014. While Guinness still s cites the 2014 gathering in Malaysia in its record book, an organizer of a Trump Tilla in South Carolina in July, said over 3,000 vessels participated in their pro-Trump parade. Saturday's attempt at the record organized in the Gulf just north of Pier 60 on Clearwater Beach. At 10 a.m., the official boat count took place at the Welsh Causeway Bridge. No official count has been announced. Boy, guys, do you think they broke the record? I don't know. There was a lot of boats there. I haven't seen Malaysia in 2014, but I will say that's a lot. That's a lot of people. That's also, a lot of boats. How much time do you think it took to organize that? You know, when there's politics involved, people, you can get get, a lot of people, people to get out there. get to work. Which... That's true. All right. Well, speaking about being on the water today, it is already 80 degrees out there, Mike. Do we have two record setting days? Yes. Uh, Friday and, and yesterday. The record on Friday was 103. Yesterday's record was 102. Both days we hit 104. So I don't think we're going to be at 104. We're still going to be very hot today, of course. And your backyard thermometers <laughs> probably look like this one. Yes. Oh, uh, I'm surprised those letters aren't just dripping from all the heat there. So that one came in at what 106 it looks like right around there. Yeah, and if you're out in the direct sun, it feels even hotter because, you know, we always talk about these numbers and you're feeling the temperature of the air. But if you're in the sun, obviously, then the sun's heating you up as well. Or if you're, you know, walking across the parking lot, you're getting that heat to bounce off the pavement. So just take it easy if you're outside, needless to say. And there's our uh, morning sunshine after a few uh, morning clouds. And as far as the rest of today, yep, it's going to be up around 102 today. And there is that chance for an isolated shower to basically up to the north. 
later on, um, probably about dinner time or into the evening hours and wind out of the uh, southeast about 10 15 miles per hour. So heat index readings, we will see somewhat of a drop in the humidity in the afternoon. Um, but obviously, even one or two degrees, it's still going to feel very hot out there. Now, here's the computer model and going through this afternoon, nothing coming up here, obviously. But even into late this afternoon, this model is trying to scare up one or two showers out in the hill country. But where we really have to watch out is going to be up around Austin and up to the northeast. And that's going to be later on this evening for some of these showers and thunderstorms. And as a matter of fact, just uh, within about the past half hour, Storm Prediction Center did put out the marginal risk for some severe storms. That does include Fredericksburg, Blanco, San Marcos, and not quite uh, Seguin, but maybe in here and then up to the northeast. And that would be high winds and hail would be the biggest threat. So they're going to be few and far between, but some could be potentially on the, the stronger side, of course, and that's going to be later on tonight. Now, the high is starting to sort of release its grip on us. We get into this northerly flow and that's what's pulling these disturbances down through here. And so it's a similar situation to a couple of weeks ago on the third when we had those storms move through in the afternoon. That's what's going to be the situation tomorrow where we will have a few of those showers and thunderstorms. Of course, not everybody is going to be seeing rain today or obviously tomorrow, which is the better chance for some rain, but at least there will be some of it out there. So 94 today at noon, partly cloudy. High temperature today up to 102. We will start to see a few high clouds moving on in here, primarily from north to the south. And depending on how quickly they come in, that's going to be obviously dependent on that high temperature. If we get a little more of a veil of clouds, albeit high clouds, that may keep us down perhaps even just at 100. I think we're still going to make it up into the hundreds today. All the uh, the ingredients are in place for that, but um, at least we'll have a little bit of that cloud cover. Heat advisory is in effect up until 7 o'clock because, of course, we are going to have those heat index readings well up, uh, in some cases approaching 110. So a couple of showers, maybe a few thunderstorms. Have to watch out for them up to the north and northeast tonight. And then tomorrow, about a 40% chance for showers and a couple of thunderstorms around the area. 99. And despite the fact that today is reaching the top of that roller coaster and then we start the decline in normal high temperatures, the 30-year average, it's still going to be hot. How oh, appropriate today? for a national yeah. roller coaster day. You are just... But in Jack actuality, of all trades over here. Temperatures are still going to be hot, so yeah. we'll still be above normal. Hey, and I'll are. take like 95 now. Yeah. Sounds well, nice and cool. That's good. All right, time now, 821, 80 degrees out. And Kelly Clarkson is standing her ground when it comes to her work ethic and her children. Mama Bear is mad. Details on her Twitter post that got her all worked up. In your morning's Spotlight News this morning, Kelly Clarkson is clapping back, defending herself online after a recent tweet about her recent divorce. A Twitter troll says her marriage didn't work because she was too busy with work and kids, and that is not the good old country girl many fell in love with. Clarkson fired back saying, quote, wow, shaming a woman who has a great work ethic is a great mom and who steps up and fills in for friends when they ask a favor. That's actually what good old country girls do, end quote. You get it, girl. All right, you're going to probably have to help me with this next one. The Twilight craze has sparked once again. This is the So Northwest event, the Forever Twilight in Forks Festival. The event will go virtual this year in response to the pandemic. It is slated for September 10th through the 13th after the latest sequel, Midnight Sun, hit the shelves. Stephanie Meyer's new book tells the original Twilight story from the perspective of Edward Cullen. Cullen? Cullen. Cullen. That's close. More than a million books have been sold and now the town of Forks is hoping this will be a boost for the local economy. Did you ever jump into the Twilight craze? Oh, yes. It, yeah, it, were you, the were, books came out when I was in college and what was it? It was Team Edward and Team... It was Team Edward mm -hmm. and Team Jacob. I was 100% okay. Team Jacob. Okay. Team Jacob was like the really handsome uh, werewolf. Mike, what were you? I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Time now, 826, 80 degrees out. You can now watch a new Jamie Foxx film from the comfort of your own home, still ahead on GMSA, a look at the network, the Netflix movie, Project Power. Mm, actually, it looks really good. Not like Twilight. Plus, the latest as President Donald Trump threatens funding for the Postal Service, the warning could compromise the election. We'll be right back.
Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 16th. Thank you so much for joining us. I know a lot of you guys are going to be heading back to school tomorrow, most of, most virtually, mm -hmm. but it's so maybe kind of a good thing virtually because it's going to be super hot outside. Right, a lot of different facets. Why it's good virtually, the main reason, obviously the pandemic. Secondly, you don't have to deal with that 100 degree temperature. <laughs> well, it's going to be close to it, though. But uh, yeah, as far as, hey, we had to get the bus out here. I know some folks are still doing school virtually. It won't be taking bus, but this is just a good, you know, kind of a little a little attempt at being back to normal here. So in the morning, this is tomorrow, going to be uh, right around the upper 70s, about where it is right now. And then after school, uh, temperatures are going to be maybe just shy of 100. We'll have a few more clouds. I don't know if it's going to be completely cloudy like that, but at least uh, there will be the chance for a couple of showers and a couple of thunderstorms around the area tomorrow. And that chance of rain actually is going to be starting later on tonight up to the north. Right now, there's our uh, well, kind of usual morning start. We had a couple of clouds out there. As you can see, the sun is shining brightly. We do have another heat advisory in effect today uh, with those heat index readings are going to be way up there. 105, 110 in many locations. And there's also the severe threat. Storm Prediction Center just about an hour or so ago put out this marginal risk for portions of the hill country, Fredericksburg over through Blanco, San Marcos, uh, Austin, and just right on the fringes of Seguin. There will be a couple of thunderstorms developing tonight. Some of those uh, high winds and hail would be the biggest threats with that. And again, this is going to be dinner time, and then after that into the uh, probably mid evening hours. Mold and pigweed are both on the low side. And again, 102 heat advisory today. A couple of those showers and thunderstorms to the north and a few scattered showers and storms still hot and it's still going to be hot next week, even though we're kind of over the hump after today. As far as normal temperatures go in reality, though, it's going to be even hotter than that. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Mike. In your morning headlines, a convention taking place as President Donald Trump threatens funding for the Postal Service, warning that mail-in voting problems could compromise the election. But this morning, the president now dealing with a new tragedy, a personal tragedy, the passing of his younger brother. ABC's Rachel Scott has the story. Less than 80 days out from Election Day, the battle over mail-in voting intensifying. President Trump launching a new round of attacks, calling it a disgrace. Universal mail-in voting is going to be catastrophic. It's going to make our country a laughing stock all over the world. Democrats calling on the new Postmaster General Louis DeJoy to resign. Congressman Adam Schiff tweeting, he slowed delivery, banned overtime, and decommissioned mail sorting machines right before the election during a pandemic. Within this administration is an attempt to make sure your vote doesn't count and doesn't count as cast. DeJoy, a GOP donor, was tapped by President Trump to take the job at the post office. Now under fire for cost-cutting measures that have slowed mail delivery nationwide. The president coming to his defense. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I can only tell you he's a very smart man. Protesters filling the streets outside DeJoy's home carrying signs reading, don't stamp out democracy. Across the country, states bracing for a record number of mail-in voting, now confronted with a warning from the post office that millions of ballots might not be delivered in time to be counted. And that was ABC's Rachel Scott. And President Trump says his younger brother, Robert, has died at age 71. The president said in a statement Saturday night, quote, he was not just my brother, he was my best friend. He will be greatly missed and we will meet again, end quote. Robert Trump was admitted to a Manhattan hospital with an unspecified illness. He had health problems for months. The president visited him Friday and says he died the next day. Back here in Texas, in the aftermath of the George Floyd protest, the Dallas Police Department making some big changes. Uh, Intel found that Dallas police leaders struggled with operational plans, struggled with communication, and struggled with keeping a unified command structure amid those downtown protests, again in Dallas. The recently released report says that Dallas police are now outlining numerous adjustments that they're going to make to their protest reaction plans. Some of those adjustments include who can authorize the use of tear gas and how to train for incidents involving mass arrests. Over in Portland, Oregon, protesters against police brutality continue to march through downtown. The protests so far have been peaceful with demonstrators chanting things like take it to the streets. But yesterday afternoon, a rally by a small group of alt-right demonstrators quickly 
went downhill as they traded paint balls and pepper spray with counter protesters. The group clashed with counter protesters through downtown streets and some counter protesters blocked the exit of a garage where several Patriot prayer members had parked. And heading to Mississippi, the state now in the process of determining what their new state flag will be. The new Mississippi flag could include a magnolia or stars or representations of rivers, or it could reflect the state's Native American heritage. Commissioners chose nine separate designs. Each contains a star made of five diamond shapes. Remember, Mississippi recently retired their last state banner with the Confederate battle emblem, widely condemned as racist. The nine member commission will recommend a replacement that cannot include the Confederate symbol and must have the phrase, in God we trust. The annual lights, light display honoring victims of 9-11 is officially back on. New York health officials will supervise this year's tribute to ensure workers' safety amid concerns related to the coronavirus pandemic. Big crews are needed to create twin columns of light to represent the World Trade Center in the Manhattan sky. The foundation's tribute will be held just south of the Memorial Plaza and relatives will read the victims' names with mask wearing enforced and podiums being sanitized after each speaker. In your consumer news, Rolls-Royce says it will close its aircraft parts factory in Central Virginia by the middle of next year, throwing 280 people out of work. The company confirmed the decision yesterday, which it said came about from the decline in global travel during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Richard Times Dispatch reports there have already been 120 layoffs at the plant in June. The factory opened in 2011 in an office park in Prince George County. Workers were told Friday about the plant closing. Then President Barack Obama visited the plant in 2012. British based Rolls Royce has North American headquarters in Northern Virginia. And big news in terms of a possible new vaccine, a UAE and Israeli firm signing an agreement to develop a faster COVID-19 testing device. The head of UAE's Apex National Investment Company and Israel's terror group met in Abu Dhabi yesterday and the Apex's chairman, actually coming out and saying that the agreement will help serve humanity by strengthening our research on COVID-19. This partnership comes just two days after the UAE and Israel announced they are establishing full normalization of relations. Happening today, the San Antonio 19th Amendment Centennial Committee is hosting several events tied to the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amend Amendment. The series of the events is happening this week. It will kick off today at 1030 with a ceremony where white ribbons will be tied around trees at Brackenridge Park. On Tuesday, people are encouraged to turn their porch light on on for the light up the town event. And then on Friday at 11 a.m., there will be a flyover of female pilots. The event is to commemorate 19th Amendment, which gave the right for women to vote, and the 55th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, which ensured women of color also had the right to vote. Now, we all know during this pandemic, so many local families are hurting. To help families in need, the nonprofit YouthQ is going above and beyond to help serve our community. YouthQ has positively impacted the youth of our community through the power of choral music nationally and here in San Antonio through the San Antonio Youth Chorale. SACI, the local nonprofit franchise of YouthQ, regularly performs fundraisers for the San Antonio Food Bank and other local nonprofit organizations needing support and needing visibility throughout the United States. You can actually watch YouthQ's concert on KSAT 12 today from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. showing your support for the food bank. Remember, one dollar donated to our food bank can help provide seven meals. If you have any questions or if you just want to help out, we have all that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And time now, 839, 80 degrees out. Still ahead, senior citizens at Texas Assisted Living are letting loose while under quarantine. A look at how they are living it up while staying safe. Plus, here's a good movie I'm actually really excited for. If there was a pill that could give you pure power, kind of superhero power, in just minutes, would you take it? Absolutely, Max. I feel like the, the correct response was asking what would the power be, but <laughs> we're going to take a look at this new project starring Jamie Foxx. No, just, just I want the power. All the power. <laughs> it's all about the power. <laughs> What's going to be working really hard today, speaking of power, is your AC because it is going to be another scorcher. But Mike has some good news, maybe a little relief in sight. We'll tell you about that when we come back. Welcome back. A new Netflix movie looks at what happens if superpowers could be unlocked by just taking a pill. Rick Damagella talk with the cast of Project Power. 
there was a pill that could give you five minutes so they get it. I'm embedded with the power. Of pure power. I'm embedded with the power. Would you take it? Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt star in the Netflix original Project Power. You ever taken one of those before? It can make you strong. It can make you invisible. You never know what your power is until you try it. The movie was filmed and takes place in New Orleans. It's a beautiful place to be in, and, and for some reason, it feels like a backdrop. It feels like uh, a, a movie set, all those different bridges that you pass by, and even the way the weather felt like lent to what we were trying to get done. Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays a detective using power pills to fight powered up criminals. On the one hand, he's a, he's a good cop that really wants to protect the people of New Orleans, and on the other hand, he's seduced by that temptation of, of power. And uh, I think that complexity is part of what makes him so fascinating. Dominique Fishback leaned into her acting school training for her role. Wanting to make sure that the, the craft is first, is, is what's first. So every scene I just approached it like that. What is the basics of what does she want? You know, what does she want in a scene and how is she gonna be different um, at the end of the scene than she is from the beginning? Oh, you look like Batman and Robin. No Batman and Robin, that's a movie. This is real life. Powering up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, Project Power premiered and is now available on Netflix, and we are talking about this. <laughs> if there was a pill for my superpower, I think it'd just be to be able to teleport. Like, so I the question, be in the Europe question right you're now. answering that you're posing yourself is if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Be teleporting. Teleporting. Yeah. Like, okay. just be like, boom, boom, boom. I can, you know, you have more okay. time. Like, I'm always in a hurry. I like that. Mike, what about you? If you had any superpower, what would it be? Um, gosh, I don't know. A lot of people always think about being invisible. I don't, I don't think that's a practical. <laughs> <laughs> out Mike's there. invisible, there's no way. <laughs> Not in that dapper suit of yours. <laughs> um, I don't, what would yours be, Max? I don't know. I liked Sarah's teleporting. Time travel would be pretty sweet. Yeah, or time travel. That sounds like so much fun. I feel like you could, that could actually be a very helpful superpower. Strength, just not that practical. No. I don't need to be strong that much. No. no. Um, Flying, I don't fly that much. I don't, I don't, fly I don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> time travel would be interesting, but then, you know, like all the movies. You, you know, mess up the, the butterfly time. effect. Yeah. The whole paradox, can you meet your grandparents? Oh, so. oh, that's a good one. Our producer is getting really upset that we're talking about powers for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and the ultimate power, superpower is the producer because they, you know. She holds the power. <laughs> right. You guys stop talking. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, I love, you know, a lot of folks have been sending in pictures of windmills. If you watch uh, during the weekday mornings, I, I, just something about these, these windmill pictures. I love them. Thank you very much for that. And look at those blue skies out there. We're going to be seeing maybe not quite as blue sky, especially later on this afternoon. We've got sort of that morning haze, a lot of sunshine out there though right now. And today is the day where it's the last day of the normal high temperature, the hottest time of the year, historically, 97, 75. So every couple of weeks, temperatures are going to be dropping down. Historically, the average temperature about uh, four degrees, three, four degrees. So by the first of September, normal high is 94, then down to 90 middle of the month. And by the first of October in six weeks, the normal high temperature is down to 86 degrees. That doesn't necessarily mean that Mother Nature pays attention to pays attention to the history books, especially this upcoming week, because we're going to keep temperatures well above even that number by throughout next week. The normal high temperature is going to be about 96 and even dropping toward 95 degrees, but uh, it's still going to be on the hot side. Now, late yesterday, we had a couple of uh, showers that developed way out in northwestern portions of the hill country. This northerly flow around here remains in place and there'll be some more disturbances sliding down, so that's going to prompt a couple of showers and thunderstorms to pop up up to the northeast. Not necessarily today, although this model keeps some clouds around here. And if we do get some high clouds in, obviously that's going to have a big effect on the temperatures right now going for 102, but it should they thicken up a little bit more. That's going to shave off a few degrees off those high temperatures. So keep rooting for the clouds. Anyway, later on tonight, we see some of these thunderstorms or excuse me, some of these showers and storms trying to develop up there to the uh, northeast, and that's prompting Storm Prediction Center to issue an advisory for marginal risk for uh, high winds and hail would be the biggest threats for severe storms. That's going to be up to the northeast and that's going to be later on this evening 
and uh, probably after dinner time right after that. Then we keep the same sort of weather pattern going into tomorrow. So the high pressure, which is sort of releasing its grip a little bit, it's moving off to the west a little bit more. That's now putting us into this more pronounced northerly flow, and that's why these disturbances are sliding through here. So that's what's going to give us a bit better chance for some rain tomorrow and perhaps a couple leftovers on Tuesday. After that, it's just going to be on the hot side, and that's going to be the case all the way through the rest of the week. So, like I said, Mother Nature is not going to necessarily follow the history books as far as temperatures this week, and we're going to be staying on the hot side. 94 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature 102. Again, it's very dependent on how quickly those clouds decide to move on in here. Mostly sunny skies, and then we have the chance for some rain around here tonight. Now, there's also a heat advisory throughout the afternoon for those heat index readings to be up around 105 to 110. Tomorrow, 99, about a 40% chance for showers and thunderstorms, and Tuesday, a leftover shower, but we're still going to stay upper 90s, triple digits, even Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday going into next week. Well, there you go. Nice cool down at 99 degrees. Yeah. Psychologically, though, it feels a whole lot better. Oh, especially if, when you get a little shower like that. But then think about it, too. Tomorrow's 99, 5 degrees cooler than yesterday and the day before. Right it's going to feel nice. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Time now, 8.50, 80 degrees out. Well, navigating college life can be difficult for any student, but more so for those who have aged out of the foster system. Tomorrow on GMSA at 6, we'll tell you about a county pilot project and how successful it's been for UTSA. And the news you need to know before you go, police still searching for the driver of a vehicle that left the scene after crashing into an EMS unit on the city south side. All this happening just after 3.30 this morning. It all happened in the intersection between Southwest Military Drive and Commercial Avenue. Police telling us the EMS unit and another vehicle crashed into each other in the middle of that intersection, causing the EMS unit to roll over. Fortunately, no one was injured. And an assisted living facility in Hillsborough has gained quite a bit of attention after residents there are getting to let loose a little bit during this quarantine. That's right. And if you head to KSAT.com, we have this story on there right now. The residents at Texas Assisted Living Facility enjoyed drinks, tattoos mm -hmm. during quarantine. So, you know what? We, we do talk about all of the, the negatives of the pandemic and the quarantine. And look, we have been tracking a lot of assisted living facilities, but... It is nice to see that people taking advantage of this opportunity. You get to see some wine, some beer. They're partying it up. Okay, these were temporary living. tattoos, though. But this, this <laughs> woman holding the Bud Light with her temporary tattoo. That's a real Bud Light. It's a real Bud Light. <laughs> Tattoo's not real. But it, 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 it just goes to show no matter what age, we're all going through kind of like the same thing. We're all getting a little stir crazy. And some of us just need to just focus on having a good time and mm -hmm. the company of one another, you know? Well, what have you done during this quarantine to kind of try to go through? I re-landscaped my yard. Look at that. Good for you. Yeah, now, that's awesome. And now my grass is almost completely gone, Mike. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and know, then, no matter, and I still hand water every single day. For you. Seeing that about the Impressive. living makes me think I better call my parents and make sure they're not getting tattoos right now. <laughs> so. <sighs> Anyway, uh, yeah, it's going to be another hot one. Get out there and hand water today. Although some folks up in the Hill Country may get a little bit of water thanks Whoa. to Mother Nature. Heat advisory uh, is in effect till 7 o'clock. And then we have a marginal risk for some uh, potentially strong to severe storms up in our northeastern counties. That's going to be later on tonight. And then going into, first of all, today, 102 for high temperature. Although it will be dependent if we get some high clouds to move on in here. That'll obviously have a big impact on those temperatures. Tomorrow, about a 40% chance for showers and a couple of thunderstorms around here. But it's going to be staying hot next week. Thank you, gentlemen, for making my first day wonderful. Aw, thank you for joining us, Mike. It's my pleasure. You're putting me to shame with your dapper outfit. Never, never, sir. Have a great Boyish night. Boyish charm.